Hey folks, here we are continuing on with section 10, the tail cone. Very exciting. This is a 10 three step five where I'm just working on putting together uh, that horizontal stabilizer attachment bars and the positioning bulkhead etc um, and then I go through and clean up my shop for a little bit which is something I often neglect and then it's just a matter of going through and finding various bits in 10-4 that need to be prepped uh, there is quite a few times in this particular section uh, all the 10 sections where you're going to be fabricating uh, parts from angle iron, angle aluminum, whatever. Uh, and, it, you know, again, not, none of it is difficult. Just be sure to check your measurements multiple times and make sure you use the right part. Um, the plans are very good. They'll tell you if it's a if it's a three quarter inch by three quarter inch angle aluminum or if it's uh, one inch by one inch or whatever. Um, you'll see on the floor there, you've got a bunch and all of them are ever so slightly differently sized. Make sure you get the white one because if you do cut the wrong one, you're going to be SOL down the road because you'll have need you'll need that, you know, length for another piece and you'll have now just screwed up. So, uh, don't do that. <laughs> Here I'm going through and I'm pulling up all the vinyl off of the uh, assemblies or for the, you know, for the frames. Uh, not all the, you know, we're starting to get into pieces that are much bigger so you kind of have to uh, assemble multiple bits together to get a single, what well, what is later is a single piece that you'll use as a single piece. Uh, and that's that's a good example of this here. Uh, that's the F1008 frame uh, that I'm assembling there. And now I'll, I'll probably, yep, I'm starting the assembly of the next one, which is the 1007 frame, which is slightly bigger. And then the 1006 is even bigger than that, etc. You might see a trend. Lots of deburring using that uh, six inch wheel on my bench grinder there to go through and, you know, get, get the jagged edges off and, and uh, do the do the deed here's the 1006 so this is the front piece that you'll see as I start to assemble the thing vinyl I'm getting better at getting the vinyl off uh, that was one of those things that it, it seemed like such a pain in the ass to get off but I guess for whatever reason now it, it's just not a thing anymore the vinyl comes right off it's easy uh, I think someone had said that the, over time the vinyl gets more sticky and more difficult to get off and I don't know I'm kind of finding the opposite is true it seems like it's coming off much easier so either I've gotten better or it's just easier okay so this is the beginning of 10-5 of, uh, step 2 so in this here's where we're going through and we're marking and cutting all of the fuselage stiffeners so they send um, a bunch of J channel which is just bent aluminum uh, and there are six and eight foot lengths. Uh, I forget how many of each, uh, four or six, I forget, uh, but you know, quite a few. And they just basically say, okay, you need to cut, cut one 68 and 3 eighths inch, and you need to cut two that are 50 and 50, 5 eighths inch, etc. And so you have to go through and mark each one. Then, uh, and then cut them. And then once you've done cutting them, it then says, okay, now you have to make the ends of each of them 45 degree angles. Okay. So then you go do that. And you know, it's just, it's tedious. It's one of those things you go, God, it's like 47 different things. And I gotta go do it. And it sucks, but just be careful and measure and make sure you cut the right direction and you'll be fine. Make sure also you use the six and eight foot lengths correctly. Again, if you cut the wrong, uh, piece from the wrong length you'll then not have what you need later on uh, the next thing you have to do is you want to remove the vinyl from the bottom side of each of those where they actually touch the skin and then you have to draw a line down the center of the J channel and what I've done here is I've clamped it to my straight edge uh, you know in two places on either end and then in the middle because it is it does have a slight bend and so I wanted to make sure that that straight line was actually straight uh, you know across the entire thing you know like a I forget what it is five and or five sixteenths of an inch or something like that from the edge uh, I just made that up whatever it was but you know I wanted to make sure it was correct all along the way and it's really important that you do this. Uh, this is something that I, I thought, God, do I really need to do this? But yeah, yeah, you really need to do this. Uh, later on, you will be drilling holes through that line 
Um, in fact, that's in this video as well. It's very important that you actually be able to see that line so you know roughly where you're drilling. So um, even though this, you can tell this is this took like an hour and a half, it does take a good long time. It's worth doing correctly. A good straight edge is uh, was really helpful here, and also those clamps were also very helpful. So here I'm working on the long garons. Uh, so these are the two really long uh, angle aluminum, like 125 inches by three quarter by three quarter, big, thick, heavy duty stuff. Uh, and <clears throat> these are important. These are two uh, important structure pieces that uh, you'll see later on where they go and you go, okay, yeah, those are pretty important. Um, and in the beginning here, I'm, I'm drilling some holes and then I'm marking and I'm going to remove some shaded area. Uh, you have to do this because of the brackets that we had already done. They, they fit right in where those holes are. So right there, I went upstairs and did that. And now you see me kind of rasping some of that in from, or some of that, uh, excess aluminum out of there. So the next thing you have to do is you have to bend the longer ones. And again, this is one of the things I was like, hmm, I wonder if I actually need to do this. And the answer is absolutely. You absolutely need to do this. So uh, it's, it's not much, but you want to put about a two degree bend. Uh, and it tells you where to put it in there. And I, I'm not going to bother describing it to you, but you'll see when you put it up next to the skin, there's a point where the skin has about a two degree down bend. And yeah, you, you need to absolutely do this, um, or else your skin's not going to quite fit correctly. So, uh, thankfully I, I, I was prodigious in my bending and uh, I bent it correctly. You can see over there, I'm, I put the skin down and I'm checking on it. I was like, okay, is that going to fit correctly? And I did it with both of them to make sure. And I, I think I went back and went, you know, that one didn't quite do it. So I had to go back and hammer on it and do it a couple more times, but it is important. So make sure to get that done. All right. So here we go. Something kind of cool. Um, now we're beginning the process of actually assembling the tail cone. Um, the first thing you have to do is grab that bottom skin, um, and thankfully the bottom skin has uh, J-channel stiffeners as part of the skin itself. Basically, they just formed it with those, and so you can just mount it between uh, two sawhorses like I have, and yay! And then it's a matter of just adding the pieces one at a time. Um, and again, this is one of those things, nothing is difficult, just follow the instructions. Uh, I did have to slide, like, when you're sliding these J-channel stiffeners in, uh, just make sure you, you you get them in there correctly, and they will resist sliding a little bit, uh, but ultimately they get through just fine. But see, what I'm doing here is exactly what I was talking about. You have to be able to see through the holes in the bottom of the skin where the lines are that you drew, center up the J-channel, drill that hole, Clico it, and then go... Uh, down the entire length of that J-channel and drill a hole on that line you drew and put a Clico in. Uh, now, one thing you'll note is I used a Clico in every single hole um, here. Actually, uh, I'm doing every other. And then I go back and I drill and I put, uh, put Clicos in every hole. But either way, uh, you don't need to put Clicos in every hole. Uh, I would say probably every other hole is reasonable. And the reason I say that is because I know I have 623 Clicos uh, of the number 40 size Clicos. And I used all of them. I used every single one of them on this thing. In fact, I was like going back and harvesting Clicos from other areas. So um, there's a lot of holes. You're gonna be drilling a lot. You, you could easily have probably 1200 Clicos and still use them all if you put every single hole. So uh, just just know that you probably don't actually need to do every single hole when it comes to Clicoing. Of course, you do, do need to drill every single hole, duh. Once you get the bottom uh, correctly set up, oh, I forgot, there's Mr. Big. So that dog you saw there is a, is the one of the neighborhood uh, dogs. He is a Labradoodle and he's the friendliest dog in the world. Just real curious, he comes over and is a friend. So this is what I was talking about. Here you can see the the bottom uh, J-channel stiffeners there with every single Clico hole put in. And that's just the left and right one. I don't think I've got the middle one in yet. And everything's just hanging upside down nicely on the sawhorse. Pretty cool, actually. I got excited here. Uh, and then as the evening wore on, I uh, continued doing the center one. That's what I'm doing now. 
and uh, yeah, it's it's just a a nice simple day of drill, 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 you know. And I noticed that my drill is starting to make uh, kind of funky sounds. Like uh, this probably was a bit more uh, work than it had intended. <laughs> it was one of those things where uh, the drill is unhappy with me. It's kind of making a grumbly growl. Here I'm working with the left and right bell, clank, uh, bell crank ribs. Don't actually know why they are called such. Anyways, my drill is not happy. So um, over the weekend, I went ahead and purchased a pneumatic drill. I don't use it much yet. And I think that's largely because my, uh, my compressor is only like three or four gallons. And so basically when I'm using it, it's constantly running. Ugh. One thing, then, you know, eventually I'll get it sorted, but yeah. Here I realized that the my chart is backwards from what I was looking at. And so I was like, wait a minute, I've got this backwards. And so, yeah, I flipped it around and, and now it's right. Um, so here I, I start the process of putting the side skin on. Those, so the rounded part, so it's easy to put the, the clicos across the top, right? Or bottom, actually. Uh, but then I start trying to to look at how the, the everything matches up and they don't quite fit correctly. And I thought, man, do I have this middle rib on upside down or backwards? No. Um, the simple fact of the matter is, is that uh, that skin has to be, it, I think it was ever so slightly over bent uh, at the factory. And so you just, it has to be pulled down about eh, a quarter of an inch. So you can start, start actually clicoing it in. Um, and that, that threw me a little bit. So I was looking and thought like, man, did I, did I screw this up or something? No, no, it's fine. It's just the, the skin is thoroughly, thoroughly bent. Um, uh, uh, dimpling it sucks too, by the way. We'll talk about that when, when that video plays. And then I begin, uh, going through and getting the stiffeners on the sides lined up correctly. And again, we go through and we make sure that the lines, uh, are correct on the holes in the side of the skin and we begin the process of drilling and, and I'm going back and forth here and making sure that I get the uh, the point end points in the correct place on either side for the various stiffeners and then it's just about drilling holes in all the lines uh, and getting all of those stiffeners installed it's it takes a long time there's a lot of holes and this goes back to the whole how many clicos can you use thing uh, and I think about here is where I start to realize you know what if I use every clico in every hole I'm gonna run out big time and so I'll probably you know slowly stop or start using less but uh, so yeah good times everything is uh, going well we're actually starting to see the tail cone of the plane takes shape, which is pretty cool. Uh, at this point, I'm much farther along again. I keep teasing you guys about that. And uh, lots to come. I can't wait. Uh, I did slow down a little bit after the uh, Memorial Day weekend. It kind of hurt my back a little bit. Uh, standing out there on that concrete, even though I've got those rubber mats and I'm sitting here, after a while, it, it kind of wears on me. So uh, I took a couple days off. Uh, from like the June the 3rd to the June the 5th. I, I didn't work on this. I did other things. Uh, but uh, lots more coming. I will not let the videos stop. So I will continue to have stuff to show you guys at the very least. If nothing else, it'll give me a chance to catch up and actually have videos. Uh, in fact, I, you know, I mentioned the pneumatic drill and it occurs to me that in this video, I never actually had the pneumatic drill. I didn't get it yet. So that, I think that's in the next video. But good times I really appreciate by the way all the the people that have come forward and said thank you and I've gotten a lot of those thank you so much that really means the world to me uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the fact that some of you guys actually watch this stuff uh, that still boggles my mind a little bit even though I go out and watch other people too so pff, I get it but uh, you know usually I'm the audience I'm not the person producing so thank you very much for the positive feedback and it does nothing but help and keep me motivated so awesome thank you um, and there you go lots of drilling enjoy fun